So I remember first learning about hyperbolic trig and I just had no clue what it was. I remember seeing it on the calculator and I was like, sine with an H, what the hell is that? And then I did a bit of research, it had nothing to do with sine, from the looks of it at least, right? You look at the equation, it's just a bunch of e to the x's. But Euler comes in clutch, right? As usual, as usual. And he, you know, there's a nice little explanation to these equations. I'm just going to explain these two equations uh, and we'll move on a little bit more from hyperbolic trig. I think it's a pretty interesting topic. <laughs> it's a lot to talk about with hyperbolic trig. And it also just makes equations really nice. There's so many uses of it. We'll get onto it more and more. But let's just start with a, sort of like a proof. I put proof in quotation marks because it's not a proof. It's more just a way of showing. So yeah, let's go to um, our best friend Euler over here who came up with this little um, identity. Now keep in mind, it's an identity. So we can put anything we want for x. So I'm just going to make x negative. I'm going to think, okay, we'll go i. Let's make x negative. Okay. Uh, this is a negative x timesing by a negative x. So now we're taking cosine of negative x plus i sine of negative x. Now, if you know your graphs well, and you might know something about even and odd functions. So I'll just kind of explain it. They're just kind of, a good way to think about it is graph transformations. So cosine, for example, here's cosine. If I plot cosine of negative x, well, I'm just going to do a reflection, but it's symmetrical. So, oh, whoops. It's symmetrical around the y-axis. So if I just take negative x, I'm just going to get the same thing. That's the point we're getting at here. Okay, it's, it's symmetrical, so we can say that cosine of x is always going to be equal to cosine of negative x. Okay? And with sine, right, we can still think about it as thinking, okay, well, if I, if I take sine, that's sine of x, and then I, I'm just picturing this in my head, put it, we reflect it, Right, so then we're going to get something like this. Okay, lovely. And then we reflect it again. Um, like so. You're going to get that. Okay, just thinking about reflecting it. And you realize that these two are equal. They're exactly the same. So we can again say that sine of x is the same as negative sine of negative x. Or if you want, negative sine of x is equal to, identical to sine of negative x. Lovely. Okay. And if you want to know a bit more, this is what we call an even function. And this is what we call an odd function. Okay. I don't know why. It's just what we call it. <laughs> so let's use those identities. We're going to have negative ix here, and that's going to be identical to, well, cosine of negative x is the same as cosine of x, and plus i sine of x, well, that's negative i sine of x using our identity. Okay, so we've got these two equations here. We've got this equation, I'm going to call 2, and I've got this equation here, our original one, which I'm going to call 1. Now, if I take 1 plus 2, well, if I add these, basically add these two equations, I'm going to get e to the ix, plus e to the negative ix. And, oh, should I say, yeah, probably identical as well. What I'm going to get is I'm going to get these two adding together, and I'm just going to get cosine of x. Two cosine of x, because you're taking cosine of x plus cosine of x to get two cosine of x. So I'm just adding the two equations together. Uh, the These guys cancel out, as you can see, and you're left with this. So that means you can say cosine of x is represented by this equation. So, again, I remember someone saying, oh, how, what does trigonometric functions have to do with e to the i? This is what it does. This is the, literally will give you cosine of x. It's really, really nice. That's really, really nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, what does this have to do with anything? Well, you may have noticed a similarity. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite it here. So here's cosine of x. That's equal to e to the i x plus e to the negative i x over 2. And then that here is oh, not sine of x, sorry. cosine h, or people say cosh of x. And that's equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Do you notice a similarity? 
this has no eye. You know, we just thought, you know what would be cool? Just take out the eye. Scrap the eye and invent a new function, cosh of x, which is equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. So that sort of gives a little resemblance. And you do the same thing with sine if you solve it. I'm not going to do it because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If you just minus the equation, so of plus in the equations, the cosine should cancel out and you'll get shine, which you say sine h shine of x is equal to uh, e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Okay? So that's sort of like a derivation. It's just like, okay, we got i, but we just we, we don't want these imaginary numbers going on. Uh, let's just get rid of them. And voila, that's what we get. Now again, right, why is this useful? Okay? And what, can we still really call it cosine of x, even, even after all of this? Well, let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. It's a well-known fact that the derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. Well, let's try to figure out what the derivative of shine of x is. Does it equal cosine of x? Let's see. Okay, so let's just take the derivative of this function. And then we're just going to use well, some simple differentiation. We can take out the half, and then cover the half. Um, but we can see e to the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. The derivative of e to the negative x is going to be negative negative e to the negative x over 2. Minus minus gives us a plus, so we get e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Oh, well, that's exactly the same as cosh. Okay, so that does equal cosh of x. So that means, therefore, the derivative of shine of x equals cosh of x. Now, if you go the other way around, if you know the derivative of cosine of x, you know, that's equal to negative sine of x, let's have a look at the derivative of cosh of x. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, um, hmm, let's think a little bit. So, we have the derivative of cosh of x. So, that means we're just going to take the derivative of this one, which is um, e to the x plus e to the negative x. This is even easier because you know the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. You know the derivative of e to the negative x is just negative e to the negative x over 2. So interestingly, it's not negative shine. It's actually just shine. Sine h, whatever you want to call it. So therefore, the derivative of cosine of h of x is equal to sine h of x. Okay, This is not a very difficult thing to prove. Shown. But there we go. And these are pretty important results. Okay, and... So, so no, there's a link between them two, and it's actually even easier to deal with because you don't have any minor signs to worry about. Um, so yeah, there we go. That is a little intro to your hyperbolic trick. We'll talk more about where it comes useful. It does come a lot in things like conic sections, for example. <laughs> we'll, we'll get onto that. But I thought this should be a nice little explanation for where these formula come from, just in case, you know, someone didn't really explain it to you. So thanks for watching.